This is a lecture for a slide. I talked about price consumption curve in the previous video. Now I want to talk about the income consumption curve. Income consumption curve is a curve that connects all the optimum bundles while changing the income. Income change induces parallel shift of the budget line and for each change the income you can get the consumer choice and you connect you trace all the optimum bundles that is called income consumption curve. Depending on the effect of income on consumption, we can classify the goods as normal good or inferior good. If an increase in income leads to a higher level of consumption of good X, the good X is called a normal good. On the other hand, if you decrease the consumption of good X when your income rises, you call the good X as inferior good. The most famous example about the inferior good is McDonald's. When you are poorer, you may want to buy more of McDonald's. But as your income, as you become sufficiently richer, at some point, as your income rises, you you want to reduce the consumption of McDonald's and substitute for substitute more for the restaurants or more expensive food. So that's called inferior good. Now we will study a very important topic which is analyzing the impact of price change. This is a demand curve and the demand curve shows how the price change affects the quantity demanded. So in this random demand curve, when you decrease price at this point this much, you see that your quantity demanded will increase this much. So basically, we know that the demand changes when the price changes. Okay, here we ask a very fundamental question. Why? Why this happens? The question is, in what channels does the price change affect the demand? Economists believe that we can dissect the impact of price change into the following two channels. One is income effect and the other one Let's assume that the price of a good X decrease. This will result in increase in your demand for the good X. Let's think about why. The first factor is income effect. When the price decreases, you feel richer. In other words, the consumer feels the increase in her purchasing power, which is the same as if she got more income. So this income effect will affect the demand for the good X. This effect may be positive if it's a normal good, or negative if it's an inferior good, as I explained earlier. The second factor is substitution effect. When the price of good X becomes relatively cheaper than the price for good Y, consumers will substitute for more of good X and away from good Y. This effect is coming from the comparison of the price of good X to the price of other good, price of the good Y. Okay, you compare these two prices and then you see that price of good X becomes relatively cheaper. So you substitute away from good Y for more of the good X. So in this case, you have only one, one possibility for the sign. The substitution effect when the price decrease will be always positive, unlike the income effect. Okay. Income effect and substitution effect are two totally different effects where there is no overlap. Okay, there is no overlap, it's just different distinctive effect. Therefore, we can dissect the total effect into these two effects. Okay. To illustrate, 
Assume that you enjoy Subway sandwich and let's say X is Subway and price of the Subway falls by 50% Let's assume that you used to eat Subway five times a month so X1 is 1, uh, X1 is 5 and then after the price discount 50% now let's say you buy subway nine times a month okay so what is the increase what is the effect the total effect is x2 minus x1 four so you increase your subway consumption by four units okay now let's assume that you increase one you want to dissect this total effect so let's i'm gonna just assign a random number let's assume that you increase uh, one unit of uh, subway sandwich consumption because you feel richer because of the purchasing power Which is income effect and let's assume that you increase uh, increase three units of subway due to the substitution effect You see that subway became cheaper than other food like Kofu so you reduce your consumption of Kofu and substitute to more for the subway sandwich so one and three there is no overlap so one plus three has to be summed up to total effect four okay so that was a random number assignment example now let's look at this in a more rigorous way okay okay all right so first you have this initial button line, okay? So you can still think of good X as Subway and good Y as other food, all other food. Let's, you can put it as Kofu, okay? So, so initially, you have this button line. And then there is a 50% assumption, the 50% discount on the Subway sandwich. So what happens? Your buzzing line will be rotate, will rotate outward. Okay. Now your real income in terms of subway uh, increase by a factor of two. On the other hand, your real income in terms of y, good y, stays the same because py is constant. You change the px, you decrease the px by 50%, for example. Okay, so your buzzing line rotates like this. So this is the initial buzzing line, buzzing line one, and this is the buzzing line two after the change in the price. Okay, so initially you have initial basket, basket A. Okay, and then with the new price after the fall in the price you have the final basket, basket C, okay? And XC minus XA, so the number of subways on sandwich, okay? The increase in the number of sandwich, XC minus XA is called the total effect, okay? And we, you want to dissect this total effect into substitution effect and income effect, okay? By the way, I have to emphasize that substitution and income effect are definition. The way we decompose like this is defined by economists like this. So although it's just a definition, there is no logical reasoning here. It's a definition. However, it's very intuitive, intuitively make, make sense. So I want you to have strong intuition about why economists want to dissect we want to define substitution and income effect like this okay in order to do that you have to find the decomposition basket okay um, okay so let me use my graph so a is the initial basket with the original price and C is the final basket after, after the price change, Px drops, okay? 
So the question is, how do we get the decomposition basket? First, you focus on the substitution effect. Okay? How do you want to define substitution effect? Whenever you hear substitution, you have to think about being on the same indifference curve. Okay? This is the original indifference curve with your original utility, your original happiness level when you consume with the old price. Okay. So in order to talk about substitution, you have to find a basket that is exactly the uh, that lies on the same indifference curve. Okay. So do you remember rate of substitution? So when I was talking about marginal rate of substitution, MRS, I gave you this intuition. A and B. So we've started with the rate of substitution. Okay. You can pick any random two baskets on the indifference curve and you can talk about substitution because A and B give you the exactly same happiness level. You can talk about substitution. So you can say you are indifferent of giving up this much of good X to gain this much of good Y. Okay. So this is your rate of substitution. Okay. So you, you don't talk about rate of substitution when let's say C between C and A because C gives you another level of happiness. So it doesn't make sense when A and C are in the different in different curves, it gives you different happiness level. You don't want to substitute your between A and C, okay? Because it gives you different happiness. Okay, so the basic is that whenever you talk about substitution, they have to be on the same indifference curve that gives you the same happiness level. Okay, so in order to talk about in order to find the substitution effect, you have to find the basket that is on the same indifference curve as the original indifference curve that is associated with your initial basket. Then which basket are you going to choose to talk about substitution effect? Okay. You're going to choose, you're going to... So here the question is, with a new price, what is your substitution basket? So if you face the new price, by the way, when I say price, um, the, you know, price is associated with the slope of the fuzzy line. Okay. So when the price changes, your slope of the buzzing line changes. So I will often say the price to to refer to the slope of the buzzing line okay so price is strongly associated with the slope of the buzzing line okay so slope because slope of the buzzing line is the price ratio so when the price changes your slope of the buzzing line changes okay so the question is when you are faced with a new price this is a new price after the discount, after the drop in the PX. When you face with a new price and holding your utility level constant to the initial level, what is your basket? What basket will you choose if you face the price, new, new price, instead of this old price? Okay. In order to answer the question, the natural way to find the substitution basket is you bring this price to your original indifference curve. Okay, so it has to be parallel shift. You parallel you do the parallel shift of the new buzzing line because that's the new price. So you bring the new price here. Okay, so it's parallel to this new price. So this is a new price, but you shift 
this new buzzing line, the new price toward toward the initial indifference curve and find the tangent, the point that is tangent to your initial indifference curve. So you are done. Once you find this basket B, this is called the decomposition basket. Okay. Or intermediate basket. Okay, once you find this B, you are all done. Because, so this is the new price. And this is the old price. Okay. So substitution effect is all about price holding the utility level constant. Okay. So when the price changes from here to this new price, this is your rate of substitution. You are willing to give up this much of good X to gain this much of good Y. So this is your substitution when there is price change like this, okay? <clears throat> so here, the substitution effect is from here to here, right? I can give you a different price, okay? So the substitution effect is very easy, okay? Let's say you are interested in another price, mm, Px. No. So I said slope of the buzzing line is the price, the ratio of the price. I give you very flat price, like this. Okay. Then what is the substitution effect? When the price changes from here to very flat price, another new price here. You just need to find the point where your in original indifference curve is tangent to the, the very new price line, which is this. And then you can say that this is your substitution effect. Okay. If the prep PX chip becomes cheaper, like this much, you're willing to um, give up, uh, you are willing to gain more of good X amount. So this is a substitution effect, okay? And give up this much of good Y. And this is called a substitution effect, okay? Okay, so going, moving between A and B is the substitution effect, okay? Now let's go back to the graph in the slide. Okay, so... So this is the new price, and you bring the new price parallel, parallel shift to the original indifference curve, and the point that touches this, um, uh, the point where this indifferent, original indifference curve and the new price becomes tangent, the point, it gives you the decomposition basket. Okay, so moving between A and B, you can say that this is the substitution, okay? So because of the decrease in the price of good X, you, this is the substitution effect. You increase XB minus XA, this amount, due to the substitution effect. Okay. So substitution effect is the effect on the good X holding the utility level constant and when there is a price change. Okay, you cha only change the price, not the utility level. That's the substitution effect. Now income effect is much more intuitive. In order to go from B to C, you need, it is as if you need this much income. Okay? If I give you more income, your, your buzzing line will shift from here to here, okay? So you feel like you, are, you became richer by this much. And, and xc minus xb, 
This is called income effect. Okay. So this is a definition again. Okay. And I try to give you the intuition. There is no logical reasoning. Okay. So economists believe that the total uh, XB minus XA, this amount was caused by substitution effect. And XC minus, XC minus XB is caused by income effect. And your total effect, XC minus XA, can be dissected <clears throat> like this. Like substitution effect and income effect. Okay. So the only problem here is to find the decomposition basket here. And you will see in the example later on about how to do this. Okay. So this is basically the same graph. Okay. So XB minus XA is a substitution effect. XC minus XB is income effect. So here it highlights that X is a normal good because your income increases and you increase your consumption on good X. So it moves from X B, uh, B to C, you increase. So here, increase uh, uh, consumption of X, it means the income effect is positive. So X is a normal good. What happens if X is an inferior good? I give you, when you move from B to C, you see that XC is smaller than XB. Okay? If it's an inferior good, when you have more income, you reduce the consumption of the good X. Okay? So you can also have this kind of graph. However, when you go from A to B, so substitution effect, as, I, as we discussed earlier, when there is a decrease in price, okay, you always increase your, your good X if it's caused by substitution effect. So substitution effect has to be always positive. However, as you see here, income effect can be positive or negative depending on the characteristic of the good X.